Hey, good day, good morning from wherever you are in the world. My name is Aaron or Az, and this is an episode of Getting Back to Basics. Double hook up! How am I gonna do this? Holy! <laughs> this humpback whale is about 200 meters from the boat. Wow. I didn't realize there were so many. That is insane. I'm kayaking out to the Rifle Bird, a boat which is anchored a few hundred meters off the beach. And to be honest, I'm extremely happy it's still here. It stormed most of last night. Um, so testament to the vessel that she's still here, exactly where I left her. Um, the game plan is that I'm heading out by myself really, really far to try and catch a really, really big fish. Final bits of the gear now to throw in the boat. Put the kayak back up on the beach, swim out and we'll put the throttle down. See if we can go get one. I'm nervous, I'm excited. I hope the weather's good. Let's do it. Back to basics bag. All the important stuff. Sell these on our website, they're amazing. Go check them out if you want a really good dry bag. Water, towel, gaff for the big fish. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Woo! oh, that's a good fish. That's a really good fish. Oh, it's sort of swimming towards us now. Wonder what it is. We're in probably 65. Oh no! No! Something with big teeth, that's for sure. Look at that. Holy, that has destroyed that hook. It has absolutely smashed that lure. Back to the drawing board. All right, the salt has settled on that little session dropped what most likely was a big Spanish mackerel or a wahoo. It was swimming incredibly fast. We're pretty much going right through where the birds are having a morning feed, stirring up all this bait. And then under it, there must be a couple of bigger fish, not just the dolphins. Yeah, I'm not actually even where I intended to go yet. I'm probably three quarters of the way there. I still want to head another 10 or 20 miles that way, out off the the edge of the continental shelf where there's a few high spots. So I am just though being opportunistic, looking for, for life, for birds, for bait, and then with that, hopefully the bigger fish that I'm after. Um, but these are the, the two lures that I'm running this morning. I'm going one or two of these, running shotgun out the back on the top water, and then a couple of deeper diver, fast trolling, hard body lures. So hopefully that produces the goods. Surely we're gonna be on. Surely. Ah! 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 Oh! Holy! Woo oh, that is smoking! We got a smoking Saragossa! Oh wow! That is a good sound. I was literally just about to leave. Oh, there's still a fish on this one. Can I wind them both? Can I get them both? Oh, geez, there's lines everywhere. I'm gonna have to put the boat in gear to be able to keep all these lines at the back because I've got three lines out, pretty easy to tangle up. Oh, geez, there's still a fish on this one here. Woo! -hoo -hoo! I can't see it, can you guys see it? Just wrapped me around those back lines. Oh, pretty much straight under the boat. Oh. Oh, what is it? I want to get a look at it. Oh, it's a nugget. Oh, jeez. Just saw the boat. I really hope you can get a gauge for just how difficult this is doing it solo. Not wanting to lose the fish. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to land it, but... The Great Barrier Reef Circus at its best. Oh. Oh jeez, it's fighting. No, don't have another run. It's already been 20 minutes. Come here, mate. Come here, you beautiful, beautiful fish. All right, it's getting close. Oh. Ah. Yes! Oh, a tutor in the boat. Woo! Now that the chaos has subsided, just give you a better appreciation for that northern bluefin tuna. Fought like a demon, really nice size, maybe five kilos. We're looking forward to sharing that with the family back home. Get it on ice. 
Let's get the lines back out. All right, just for reference, this was the catcher of the fish. Dark, green, black, bit of glitter, bit of disco through it. And on that note, uno mas. One more round. Let's try that again. Yep, yep. Ah. Oh. Whoa. What is that? Oh no! Ah! <sighs> Dropped it. There's just dolphins. There's dolphins all around the boat. Oh, a little baby dolphin. They're literally just playing around the front of the boat. Oh, epic. Oh, no way! Oh, yes! Oh, they're all playing at the front of the boat! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, no way! <laughs> I didn't realize there were so many! Yeah, the dolphins! <laughs> and if you're wondering who's driving the boat, no one's driving the boat! <laughs> that is insane! I was literally just slowing up because I saw a heap of bait and a couple of big jumps through it. I thought it was tuna, but it's a heap of friendly dolphins. <laughs> so cool. Everyone's trying to get breakfast this morning. Got all the dolphins here, having fun, having a play at the front of the boat. And then you got all the birds working just there, bait and hopefully some tuna through them. So I'm literally getting mugged, mugged by dolphins. They're everywhere. This is amazing. I almost fell overboard. That would have been bad for business and everything else. Oh, oh, hit, hit, hit. I just went smack bang through all of that bait. Um, but maybe the dolphins are just stirring all the, the larger fish up. There's a dozen still at the front of the boat and another probably 20 over there in that bait school. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Holy! <laughs> well, I hope there's a lot of line on this. <laughs> oh! Oh, the top rod! Double hook up! How am I going to do this? What a spectacular first run. Oh mate, I'm pumped. I'm real life pumped. All right, let's get the hooks out of you, bud. A moment of appreciation and gratitude for this beautiful yellowfin tuna. One of the best eaten blue water fish and not one that we commonly get, so really, really happy with that. <laughs> oh mate, I'm stoked. Two tuna in the cold box. All right, trip update. I'm looking for bait, I'm looking for birds, but there is no activity. No dolphins, no birds. Everything's fled the scene. It is a pretty neat tide and we're at the top of it. So there's close to no movement, which is suboptimal for trying to get a good feed of fish um, and fish activity in general. But persevering, because I'd really love a wahoo or a dolphin fish or a dog tooth tuna, which is the right time of the year and I'm in the right location with the right gear to get one of any of those three. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the time in, hoping that on the other side of this tide, we get a bit of activity. Bloody hot, so I'm gonna head back in 20 miles or so to the reef and find some shallow, crystal clean water to try and get a reef fish. This humpback whale is about 200 meters from the boat. I'm gonna turn the motor off and get the drone up in the air. Let's get an eagle eye view. I think there's two of them. Wow, I've never actually personally seen humpback whales do that with my own eyes. So that was unexpected and fantastic. It's also like two or three months after when we're supposed to get humpback whales coming through here. Uh, the water's like a lot warmer than when they normally come through. So that's strange, but happy about it. Good to see them. Um, all right, keep moving. We're still 20 miles. 
to get to the reef, the shallow reefs. Definitely got to have a look on that. I think this is a prime spot for lunch. And have a look around. Can you see one other boat? One other sign, actually one. There's one right in the distance over there to the north near a sand cay. Outside of that, not one boat. It's a weekend. All right, tuna time. That's lunch. I'd say that tuna is going to take about 15 minutes to cook in the lime juice. So, let's get in the water. Although there were stingless jellyfish, well, I was hoping they were stingless, <laughs> jellyfish everywhere. The water was warm, clear, and really inviting to check out a few of these caves. And it didn't take long before I found a couple of lobster antennas deep in an undercut ledge. Here in Queensland, this state, you legally can spear them. This is to ensure that if they are deeper in an undercut ledge, instead of trying to grab them and wrangle them out, which can often damage them, uh, you can ensure that you get what you're hunting. Nice green cray. Had to go the old reverse kebab approach, but nonetheless, it's a good feed. One more under this big brain coral. One more green cray here. Yeah. over that shark in case you didn't want to feed a crow, but that's a good one. Didn't even think I'd get in the water today, but two rocks, two crows, that'll do me. Phew. Definitely was hoping for them, but didn't expect them. Literally <laughs> anchored the boat, chopped that yellow fin up for lunch, jumped over, two rocks, two beautiful crows. Extremely happy with that. Oh no. Oh, it's proper cooked. Very much cooked it cooked in that acid. Geez, lime, lemon, soy sauce. It's fantastic. My only regret is that I didn't cut up more tuna. The last few days there's been a lot of storms on the 
on the ocean and I didn't want to risk it tonight camping out on the reef. So I've, I've opted to come back into behind me where you can see is a, a little inshore island to get a really good safe anchorage. I've um, got a fire going below the high tide mark. I'm gonna cook up the smallest of the two crays and I was thinking about cooking up some of the yellowfin tuna, but there's a lot of people watching this that would go, like the best way to cook a yellowfin tuna is not to cook the yellowfin tuna. Let me know in the comments what your opinion is to cook or not to cook the yellowfin tuna. And if you would cook it, how would you eat it? Uh, I'm going to stick to the theme of the day and having it uh, having it raw for dinner, but I'm going to cook this cray up on those coals now. And I'm just doing a quick scout of this little, little side bay to see if there's any gods nuts getting around because there's a, a medium level of dehydration. There's a lot of terns and, and pigeons. Must be nesting. They're the ones I want right there. This is like my yoga for the day. Jeez. I'm gonna lose me coconuts. I've lost me coconuts. Never actually chopped it up like this before. Oh, come on. Where's the juice at? But it makes sense to me. So, I've landed on my feet. Got grated coconut meat, shredded, some limes from the backyard to zhuzh over it. On the cray, I did some olive oil and chili, drizzled and embedded some of this coconut meat into the meat. So hopefully it tastes a little bit like coconut, cray, lime, chili, combo. Either way, I'm hungry and it's gonna be fantastic. never gets old. That's very special. Oh, it's all meat. It's like a scallop of meat out of the cray horn. Put the horn on a crayfish. Thank you very much for watching the video. Jump onto our Patreon, our website, subscribe if you like seeing these sorts of videos and um, hope to see you out here.